Congress uh, President Christina McInnie, General Secretary of Unison, and um, I, I'm sure you don't need me uh, uh, to, to remind you of the profound effect that COVID has had on public services and other workers. The sacrifice, the loss of life, the strain on physical and mental health, and the economic repercussions will be held, felt for generations. But the Westminster government, as we know, sadly does need to be reminded. And they do need to be told in no uncertain terms that they must listen to the voices of the workers who carried us all through this crisis. And we, as the representatives of those workers, have the right to make those demands loud and clear. In unison, we represent uh, many workers who deliver services in almost every part of the public sector that we've all relied on. Congress, even the World Bank, described the pandemic as a heat-seeking missile speeding towards the most vulnerable in society. And as has already been said, we've all seen the disproportionate impact on different parts of society. And this isn't a coincidence or bad luck, and it certainly isn't down to life choices. It's because so many of those people who were so badly affected by it were likely to be in jobs that can't be done from home. Cleaners and catering staff, bus delivery and transport workers, care and health workers, and workers who emptied their bins and buried their dead. Those are just a few of the people who still had to go to work, however bad things go. And for most low-paid workers, that meant using public transport. It meant getting up close and personal with other people. And for too many, their precarious employment status meant it was difficult to speak up about PPE or health and safety issues. Time and again, our members and other essential workers were exposed needlessly to danger. Remember the early months of the pandemic? Workers wearing PPE made out of old bin bags and face masks made from bits of clothing. Care workers given disposable face masks and told to make them last a week. That was the reality back then. And we must do everything in our power to make sure this never happens again. So it is important that we call for a public inquiry to learn those lessons. Because each one of those workers who died, each person in this country who lost a family member or a loved one, and everyone whose life has been turned upside down by COVID has the right to answers. And we must demand that those who exploited this pandemic are held to account. The cronies of government ministers, family members, and even government ministers themselves, shockingly, involved in shady deals where companies sprang up literally overnight claiming to be able to get PPE deals that either never materialised or were so shoddy they couldn't be used. And even when services and equipment were provided, the profits made were eye-watering. What they did was profiteering, plain and simple. And we need answers, because if we don't learn from these mistakes, if the government doesn't learn from these mistakes, we will inevitably end up repeating them with similar dire consequences. This virus has shown us who we really depend on when the chips are down. And so we have a right to demand a new deal for public services and a new deal for workers. Because if there's any lesson that can be learned from this pandemic, it's that no society can survive without reliable and sustainable public services. Or the dedication and commitment of those workers who keep those and other essential services going. So we are now at a major economic and moral crossroads. Those same workers being offered either a pay freeze or pay deals that deliver real-term pay cuts. And yet when the next crisis comes along, and sadly it will come along, we will still be relying on those workers and those services. So only a new deal in a post-pandemic world, world will secure our future. So let's repay the dedication and commitment of those workers. It's time to call for an end to the old business as usual. Let's get a new deal for them that will strip out profit making from public services, guarantee long term and sustainable funding for public services. Let's call for an employment bill, as Francis has just said, that puts an end to zero hour contract and fire and rehire. Let's have pay that keeps up with inflation. Let's have an ambitious living wage. In short, we're calling for a fair and decent society. And you know what? That's not too much to ask for, Congress. Because we're not being greedy or unrealistic. Because if we're not speaking up for our members, then who will? And if this is not the right time to call for a, a, a new deal 
then when will be the right time? We have a strong and collective voice. We can, we must, and we will use it. We know we're stronger together, so let's work together as unions to bring about the change needed to get the fair society that we all need. Thank you.